Welcome back to the Wellhouse Exorcism. This is your ghost of host the most, Shanna. And it's Pukwa PJ. I'm so glad that you finally got it right. For all this time, <laughs> there's no awkward I can learn pause. a new trick. <laughs> Make sure I give you candy later for that. Yes. All right. Well, we're back. Wait, what kind of candy? Oh, it's going to be gummies. Maybe <sighs> even gum. No. Yep. No. Yep. This is terrible. This is the worst night ever. <laughs> is it though? I'm not getting chocolate. No, you're not. I'm going to give you the gummiest of gummies. They're going to go... When you're chewing them. That's terrible. They're going to stick to your teeth. That's terrible. This is all terrible. I know. I know you. What are we talking about? Is it less terrible than gummies? (laughs) Well, it's interesting, to use my favorite adjective. So I'm taking a page out of the Jennifer book, thanks to my step monster. I realize we've been doing a lot of research. We haven't really been telling any of our backstories in a while. Mm -hmm. And in passing, we had mentioned the George story uh, with with Jack when he's on on one of the episodes. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would tell you the story of the house that I lived in, an old farmhouse in Bloomsburg, actually, when I first moved here, when my parents were, you know, separating. Yeah, because I heard the story years ago. But not all of them. For As sure. As I got to typing, I realized there's so many little things that yeah, I didn't Yeah, that's how it always is, yeah. So, and, but, you know, in the context of me being an adult and thinking about it, all I could think was, man, parenting in the 80s and 90s, like, what the heck? Because <laughs> I had to do math in my head. I'm like, okay, so we moved. It was the middle of kindergarten for me. So I was like five, six, which means that Jack was two years younger. So he's like three, four, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when we move out of that house, it's the middle of third grade for me. So again, like, what, how are you? Are you like eight in third grade? Yeah, seven, eight, somewhere around there. So yeah, yeah at, at that point, I'm seven or eight, which means he's five or six. Like he is just going to start kindergarten pretty much. And so I'm thinking about that. And I'm like, these things that happened are happening to a freaking toddler. And, like, the us being allowed to run around outside with no parental support. Like, I'll, I'll tell you what. <laughs> parenting in the 80s and 90s. So It's like I, that video on Facebook that's been going around where there, ha- there were commercials that reminded people yeah. that they had children. <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching Bluey when he's just like, it was the 80s, man. <laughs> like, so this is not um, a slap in the face to my mom or my grandmother. Like, it is, that's just parenting back then, I guess. But no, I, think, I wandered the streets of this town. I know, but I think and about... that was at the age of 10. Well, 10. Not, we're not, talking, not eight, no, but... <laughs> we're talking the age of Alex when we move into this house. Like, that's how old Jack is. True. Right? <laughs> so, all right. So putting in context, this is an early 90s story. <laughs> it makes more sense. All right. So I wrote a script for you. But feel free to add in your own comments, Pukwa PJ. That's good, because I can't see the script you wrote. No. Because it's on your screen. I hide it from you on purpose. <laughs> I want you to be surprised. So my major story, of course, takes place in Bloomsburg, as does a secondary story that's going to come after the George story. So I got I got two for free tonight, because I figured it kind of fit. Um, and as you know, Bloomsburg is the only incorporated town in Pennsylvania. That's yes. the one thing we get to be the proud of. The only town in the whole state. <laughs> uh, but I looked it up. You have to say the only incorporated, incorporated town in Bloomsburg. Yes. It's also the county seat for Columbia County. So kind of important, Bloomsburg. Yeah. All right. So we moved up here shortly after my mom and dad separated. Because as you may have noticed, listeners, my step monster was on last week, which means that I have step family. And it gets really confusing because I had a stepdad who has uh, sadly passed away. And I had actually two stepmothers. And between all the step families, I got two hands of siblings. It's very confusing, but fun for when we get to get to get togethers. Yes. Yes. Um, so anyway, the reason we come to Moonsburg of all places, because my dad was in the Air Force. So we lived all over the United States. Obviously, he ended up in Abilene, Texas, because there's an Air Force base down there. I met Jen. <clears throat> okay. But anyway, the reason we settled in Bloom, do you know why, PJ? The Bloomsburg Fair. No. (laughs) Um, Because of my grandmother's family, which you go to the Miller Family Reunion all the time. So Mm -hmm. there you go. Um, So we came back. My mom moved to Bloom because my grandmother's family owned that huge farm. Right? Yes. So the Williams family owned one of the oldest farms in the area. In fact, it's still running, actually. I mean, they don't, like, run all the head of cattle they used to. um, But they still do raise. uh, I think they're raising Guernseys right now. 
So I know how to milk a cow. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> also, part of my <laughs> the other, other side story, we're running free in pad, paddocks and everything. Oh, man. We were like oh, farm life. Anyway, back to this. I got I to <laughs> stop. I'm thinking about Jamie falling into a pile of poop right now. It made me giggle. Um, so <laughs> he deserved it. Anyway. <laughs> My grandmother, though, to give context, she chose to leave pretty early in her life because her father refused to let her go to college uh, to become a nurse. And she was always wanted to be a nurse in her life. She was born in 1938. So we're talking, this is going on to the precipice of World War II. You see people are nurses, right? We have all of that going on. However, while she's growing up mid part of the 1900s, um, my grandfather was very old fashioned. Fun fact. My mm -hmm. gram graduated from Benton High School hmm. in 1956. Oh, wow. I know. You're welcome. Anyway, so um, her father and his name was crazy. Um, it's actually, maybe they called him just Ram for, for short. Um, he was very old school. He um, thought that women should, if they're going to go to college, you're going to college to be a teacher. And then when you get married, of course. you pop out dumb babies and you're a stay-at-home mom. Of course. Yes. Now, of course, as you know, just down the road from the farm is what was the time period called Bloomsburg State Normal School, which in the future is? Where did you go to college? Ah, uh, Bloomsburg University. <laughs> I'm going to keep that awkward pause in there when I go to edit. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> uh, and as we know, a normal school isn't like you go learn to be normal. I mean, we should go to one of those. <laughs> um, it, what is but, normal? <laughs> I don't know. But what was a normal school back then, PJ? Do you remember? From all of our classes at Bloomsburg University. Oh, man. No. No. All no. right. So a normal I would school, assume a post high school. It was a college, yes. Yeah. Um, so by 1927, to put in context, it was actually called Bloomsburg State Teachers College. They had changed the name. Um, so a normal school was the old-fashioned term for where you'd go to become a teacher. It was your training. Mm. You were taught the norms of teaching pedagogy and curriculum. It came um, from the French word normal. So right. just FYI to our listeners who aren't teachers, a normal school is actually a school to train you to be a teacher. Uh, so Bloomsburg University originally was. I a, remember that much. Yeah, a, norm, a normal school was a school to teach teachers. So my my great whatever grandfather is like, y'all going to go down that hill right there and going to go to Bloomsburg normal school and become a teacher. That's not how he talked, but I'm going to pretend it's how he talked. Um, and my grandma's like, no, I'm being a nurse. And he goes, then you're not going to college. I'm not paying for it. And so she decided to run away. So, I mean, there's that this whole side story. She meets my grandfather. They fall madly in love. They run away together to New Jersey. Do not see a Jersey devil. But anyway, um, and that's why my family lives in New Jersey. Uh, my mom's divorce, though, brings us all back here. And my gram offered to move in with her to help take care of us three. So she started renting this humongous farmhouse, which is literally down the road from the family farm. It's a nice looking house. Yes. I actually hopped on Google search though to look at it. And it looks like parts have been sectioned off and sold because there's multiple houses where the orchard used to be. Oh. Yeah. So it's changed. Huh. Yes. I did a lot of research. So I want to tell you the house that I remember because you did see it a couple times. When I pointed it out. And yeah, we've driven past yeah, it. But the, the trees are kind of growing up around it. You really can't see it mm -hmm. anymore. So it was an old farmhouse. It was white. Um, Still is. Yes, it was not rickety and rundown at all. So please don't get in your mind, listeners, like the Conjuring House or something. No, it was actually <laughs> a very nice farmhouse, huge and gorgeous. I mean, like it was so huge. I actually think of like Gone with the Wind because when you walked in the front door from the porch you were met with this humongous staircase and it actually bisected the entire house so it went up right up the middle of the house okay. and you walk up these beautiful like uh i want to say it was probably like a cherry chestnut like color because it was the color of like your um the bar you made the bar yeah that beautiful deep wood color so you'd walk up this gorgeous staircase and there's even a balcony around for the second story and so like my room is at the very top left there was a bathroom there was the master bedroom down the hall, there was Jamie and Jack's bedroom. And there was a fourth bedroom. So that's the upstairs. Mm -hmm. There was also an attic, um, which none of us went to. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if it wasn't, like, livable in the attic. or But I know we weren't allowed. I was never once in the attic. So we okay. weren't allowed to go there. Um, on the main floor, when you, again, when you walk in from the front room, uh, the front door, I should say, one half is this giant living area. And the other half is a farmhouse kitchen. 
and that is the entire downstairs. So in the middle, you got the staircase. And like the the way the house is shaped, there is also a library back off of the sitting room. And it actually had like shelves in it. So it was a really cool oh, small library. Yeah. And there was a small like powder room and there was a mud room. So it was very much like that kind of like farmhouse kitchen. Because if you came in through like the garage area, you walk through the mud room, wash your hands on a very old fashioned, like big fashion, like sinky thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you walk into the kitchen proper. Um, so just a fantastic, you know, very rustic country home. Um, so my gram actually moved into the li- the library as her bedroom. So when I tell the story later of everything else, it's kind of where the brothers are sharing a room, but I think there's a reason why, which I actually have in my, my story. Okay. Now there was also a basement that had a cellar connection to it, kind of like Lauren Ray's house. All right. Um, and just as creepy, uh, it had a dirt floor, so I never wanted to go down there. Very gross. We didn't really hang out there unless we had to. When there were tornadoes, um, like warnings, we would go down there. So I remember a couple times being down there with my gram. She'd have like the wind up radio. Uh, there was a kid's table down there. We were playing, you know, it was nice and cool down there is the basement. You know, like, it was like physically cold. Um, but I hated it cause gross. Um, one year it actually flooded down there and it flooded so bad that, um, we lost all of our family photos that weren't upstairs oh, in the yes. container. Yeah. yeah. So I don't have many photos of me as baby, which makes me sad Yeah. because apparently I was ugly. So maybe it's a good thing. Okay. <laughs> God's like, we're going to hide that. <laughs> shoo shoo now. Um, but anyway, there was a huge garage and a storage area and there was even a mud house down at the creek and I'm going to call it a creek because it was a crick. How dare you? I uh, know. Uh, I'm from from here, so. Anyone who's listening from Pennsylvania, it's a crick when it's by your house. The other ones are creeks, but it was a crick. Sure. Yep, you're all New Jersey. You can't understand. Nope. Anyway, <laughs> the, the land around, now this is, again, this is me going back to the early 90s. So, like, it obviously is different based off of Google now. It's very different. Um, but the land around it was humongous. Like, I remember that Tom would spend a long time mowing. And the one hill was awesome. It was just humongous, although it went downward towards the creek. And, like, in the wintertime, you could, like, you hope for lots of snow and you would just sled down it. And you mm-hmm. would try not to crash into the creek. Yeah, it was awesome. Into the what? The creek. It'd be frozen over, but it was still wet. But anyway, we would run free all day in the summer because, you know, it's that whole get out of the house and don't come in until we call you for lunch kind of thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. There was even an orchard on the other side of the road, which was um, for the house too, for renting. Mm-hmm. And it was a really nice, huge orchard. Like I remember there being like lots of different kinds of trees, like the pear trees and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So you can tell this was, at one time had been a, a working farm. Right. Um, and it was a great place to raise a family. Like it was a really nice place for my mom to kind of go during the divorce. And it would have been wonderful except for the ghost. Yeah. Honestly, mm-hmm. <laughs> honestly. Now I do want to put a disclaimer here. I actually have a whole paragraph in my script for it. I don't know anything. I never saw this ghost. All right. So my disclaimer, I don't claim to know much about the ghost, its origins or what the heck actually happened to this person beforehand yep all i know is my mom told me and she got that information from my grandmother okay and she's now deceased so i can't talk to my grandma about it um all i know is that my little brother and this ghost were the best of friends and i never actually saw him but i did hear a lot of things all right okay and it you really can't have jack tell a story because he was too little to remember like, yeah so i remember a lot of it and my mom does too so i remember your older brother he was able to verify the stories because you're like, yeah, you remember this? And he's like, oh, yeah, I remember that. And, you know, and he would tell the same story that you have told me yeah. many times. Honestly, Jamie was more annoyed by Jack than me. <laughs> and I was really annoyed. So, and, you know, Jamie and Jack shared a room. So I can only imagine how obnoxious it'd be to be in there, like, playing Legos. And your little brother's in the corner talking to himself. And, like, things are moving. You'd be like, you know what? Knock it off. Please go somewhere else, Satan. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so the backstory. Okay, backstory. According to my Graham, because remember, she's from the area, uh, there was a little boy that lived on that farm way back in the day. Mm-hmm. I don't have an actual date, so I'm going to say way back, in, way back in the day. Okay. He was born before she was born. Uh, his name was Georgie, or they called him Georgie. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure if that was his first name, his middle name, whatever. Uh, apparently, he was very sickly. Uh, so think like the secret garden. You know, like that kind of sickly boy can't go outside kind of yep, thing. Yep. Uh, he was constantly getting sick. Well, according to the stories then, one day in the winter, he went outside and he got pneumonia. Hmm. Alas. Um, he came home and he basically just died in the house. They couldn't they couldn't save him. Now, another version of the story, because I've heard two different versions of this, Graham versus mom. He got lost outside in the winter and his family went and found him, but he was all but dead. 
So they found like around like they were, he was like hiding in like in trees. Like all he remembers is like being like in a, a vast kind of like hollow of trees. Yep. Um. So they brought him home, but he was so weak from the cold. Yeah. Either way, him. illness from cold. Yeah. And so he dies. Yeah. Put down. Either way, Georgie <laughs> dies in the house. <laughs> <laughs> um. He was also a kid really interested in trains. And so this will make your train heart sing. Um, from what I understand, he had like everything you can imagine yes. for trains. Again, he was kind of stuck to the house. So his parents gave him what he needed. And so since he was sickly, he played in his room with the trains. Nice antique ones. Not like the Thomas the Tank Engine ones. Yeah. All right. So that's the backstory. Now, because I wanted to have some kind of research, I actually went down hours long genealogy trying to find a George in this time period that could possibly be him. But we're talking 1800s. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what do you find? Nothing. Yeah. You'd have to go down to the County courthouse and look well, up. Well, they have the... a lot online. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I, I did find some stuff. So, um, I found in the Columbian Democrat, that was the book, the newspaper of the time period in Bloomsburg on Saturday, May 31st, 1845. It says on Saturday last in Bloom township, a child's, Mr. George uh, of Mr. George Kressler had passed away and it would have been, it would have been Bloom mm. Township. Um, it wouldn't have been Bloomsburg because at that time, Ely, uh, Ayersburg, that's what it used to be called. Ayersburg slash Ayerstown hadn't been incorporated into Bloom yet. So it hadn't become Bloomsburg officially. That yeah. was in 1870. And it was pretty far out from Bloomsburg too. Yeah. So this could be the George. It's about the right time period based on the clothing discussion. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple of Georges that were mentioned, but this was the child of the Mr. George Kressler Sr. So this could be Georgie, his son. It could be like Mitchell George Kressler. Maybe you get to his George dad. George Jr. Yeah, George Exactly. So that's the best I could find. Um, but I was kind of surprised like when I went into the database, I'm like, oh my gosh, there was a child name. That's impressive. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't want to brag, but I, I do my searches and it wasn't even on a microfiche. So I, I was going to ask. <laughs> I did not do any microfishing. Thank God. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's my backstory. That's uh, there was a George who passed away. It was a child. Uh, so anyway, let's go back to the house. We move in. It was a child of George. Child. Yes. We move in. Okay. Okay. Um, it is. I'm excited. Like things are really cool at first. We got this amazing, amazing stairway. I immediately said to my mom, like, mom, I'm going to ride down that banister. And she goes, oh, heck no, you're not. <laughs> so I wanted to. It was fun to explore outside. Again, it's the 90s. Lord knows where I was and how many ticks I brought home. Like, we were all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was really excited because I got my own room upstairs and it was humongous. It's like, that was awesome. Um, the boys had to share a room. And again, as an adult looking back, I remember my gram claimed the fourth room upstairs. You know, like, so that was supposed to be her bedroom. But as I said, she was in the downstairs library as, as her bedroom. So I remember there being stuff in the fourth room. But again, adult mind's eye, that fourth room was very um, incomplete. Okay. Like the flooring was just bare wood. It hadn't been glossed or anything. Our rooms had card like carpeting, had nice wall stuff. It was painted, whatever. This room was very bare bones. It was definitely like they were fixing up the house and this room ha- it hadn't gotten to yet. Yeah. You know? Um, so I wonder like if my gram just put, stored her stuff in there. Cause again, I'm a kid, so I can't think of all the stuff that was in there. I remember there being a table in there, but mm. I was, you know, kindergarten through third grade. Um, but that was also the entrance to the attic. I believe. So maybe they said no to that room. So we wouldn't go to the attic. Yeah. Again, like this is me. Probably several reasons all put together. This is me just kind of guessing supposition at that point. Um, But in any case, um, I kind of want to go there and go into the attic and see. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm, Maybe George played up there at the trains. I don't know. Um, But anyway, I have my room and it's lovely. It has blue carpeting. It overlooks the backyard. The boys are in room together. Okay. So that's your background. Okay. And as you know, my mom works night shift. So she worked three jobs. Like I do give my mom credit for being um, an awesome mom. She really did try to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And so my Graham stayed home to take care of us. Uh, So that's why we had a Graham who was used to raising kids in the 60s and 70s. So she's like, go on outside, go and get. So (laughs) I think that's why we had that kind of upbringing. Um, But because my brothers are together and we're outside playing, I should say brothers in the room and I in my room, we played alone a lot. We'd also go outside because my grandma forced us out the house, right? But then Jack starts acting kind of weird for Jamie and me. Like, we're not happy. Um, he starts talking to an imaginary friend named Georgie. It actually, like, as I mentioned before, it made Jamie really, really mad. Like, he's like, shut 
up. Because we used to get, like, tubs. You know, like, when you're kids, like, you get tubs. Yeah. And we were all, like, less than two years apart. So, like, mom would just draw one big tub, and we'd all be tossed in there to get our bath. Mm-hmm. And sometimes in the evenings before it got weird, you know. Um, and Jack, Jack would go, room for Georgie? Room for Georgie? And we'd go, no. No. <laughs> so I remember, get him out of here. I remember, like, knock it off, man. Screw Georgie. Um, so. Dude's over 100 years old. <laughs> At that point, like a hundred and one hundred and fifty, maybe. Like <laughs> he can stay away. Um, so anyway, uh, so I can say that initially he's talking to Georgie. My mom's like, "Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's whatever." But there is an Alex aged kid talking to an imaginary friend. Like as an adult, that's freaking creepy to me. Yep. Um, and he would like be in corners talking, and like you'd walk close, and he would stop whispering and kind of look at you, like you've seen the movies, and then you're like, "Hmm, not cool." So anyway, one day I'm walking into his room uh, to get him to come play with me, and I hear him talking to someone. He was on his top bunk. And again, I'm an adult. Why is Jack, who's like a four-year-old, <laughs> why is on the top bunk? <laughs> like, what is happening? The 90s. Anyway, so I quietly, you know, stalked up there, but it was just Jack. I didn't see anything. As I mentioned, I've never seen this ghost. Yeah. Um, he actually got very mad, and he said, stop scaring my friend away. I left the room pretty ticked off. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, I wanted to go and play outside with you. But I fine, thought I know. was his friend. <laughs> yeah. But I was also just weirded out because I definitely heard two voices. Yeah. So I heard Jack talking and then a different voice. I just assumed that Jack was talking to himself. And I remember for like most of his childhood, we just said, oh, yeah, Jack talks to himself. It's fine. It's a very Robert the Doll thing. Oh, yeah, right I there. know. You know, as an adult looking back, I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> whatever another time i was um, walking downstairs and i heard train noises i was confused because jack and jamie didn't have train toises the toises yeah. toises toises train toys train um, toises toises noises. noises yeah <laughs> like my brothers were you they were well, you like trains too but they were all mortal Kombat, gi yep. joe yep. and i mean like the the barbie sized gi joes and the little guys and legos all the way like no duplos in our house all right, so that mm-hmm. was their room. So I was really confused, and my first thought as a kid was, did mom buy Jack a new toy and I didn't get one? Because Jack of was course. the baby, and he was baby. So I popped in his room to see if he got a new toy, and the noises immediately stopped. So no more hoot, 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 noise, right? Jack was over no in the toises. corner. No toises. Jack was over in a corner talking to himself again, and I asked him, did mom get you a new toy? And he goes, No. Go away. I'm like, fine, whatever. As long as you can get a toy, I don't care. <laughs> it's a little twerp. <laughs> Just checking. Um, Just want to so, play with the train. I just want to be jealous of your new toy, but all right, cool, whatever. So that was, an, again, interesting. Don't That's the story t- I heard. I, One I've of those. definitely heard that story. Yeah. Well, another time I went in to get Jack to play, and he said he was busy eating snacks with Georgie. Uh, annoyed, I climbed up to the top, and now again, this is a three or maybe, maybe maybe he's five at this point. I'm hoping because this is over a, lo- a long period. But I'm just imagining like an, an Alex aged child with a plate of carrot sticks on a top bunk with no adult supervision. Like, <laughs> I can't uh, as an adult. I can't. But anyway, so I'm annoyed and I climb up to the top bunk and there are two plates with carrots on them. Uh, both plates have nibbles out of the carrots. I was going to ask, are there bite marks? Yes. Uh, it freaked me out. But then I just logicked it that, like, Jack must have nibbled on both plates yeah. while he was, like, playing, you know. I asked him if he wanted to go outside and play, and he agreed. However, he said he didn't want to go to the orchard. Hmm. And I was like, huh, weirdo. Because that's where all the pears were. It was summertime, and it meant food time, yeah. right? So I wanted to go pick them. Absolutely. But we stayed at the sandbox that day because there's like that's like it was like out past my bedroom was under the shaded part of the house. So hot day makes sense to go there. And there was also a little pool in the back lawn, a little kiddie pool, you know. Mm-hmm. But I remembered when I was talking this. Oh my gosh, that's right. He never wanted to go to the orchard, mm-hmm. and like this is the early '90s. We all had chores to do, and one of them was to burn the trash. And I don't mean like all trash. I mean like you know the, the burnables. You know, yeah, you separate yeah. the burn. We didn't have a burn pit per se, like a I mean, burn barrel. Uh, barrel, but we had like a pit kind of area, and so we would all fight as to who could go like burn the trash. And was I, it a cinder block pit? I have to ask. 
so my grandfather had one of those it wasn't even cinder, like i don't remember it being even cinder blocks i remember like just it was a blackened area where you burned your crap oh okay like <laughs> i don't know um because then there's like all oh, this land it's crazy there probably were cinder blocks or rocks but i was a kid uh, i just remember there being a big black hole <laughs> Uh, so I, but I remember like we used to fight over who got to go burn the trash. Cause you got to play with fire mm-hmm. again. Jack is like four or five. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 what is happening? How we are alive. I don't, I don't know how we're alive. Um, so the burn area was right next to the orchard. So Jack, like now again, his age, but he was offered to burn trash. He never wanted to mm-hmm. because it was close to the orchard. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes he would offer to stomp out the ashes because if it's the summertime and you're burning trash, we'd wait until the evening when the sun was going down. It was a little cooler because it's freaking hot outside, you know. Yeah. But also there's usually dew on the grass at that point because you have these fields full of like grass. But, you know, once we're actual working fields, so they can light on fire pretty fast. So when you're burning your paper, those sparks and those papers can fly up, you know, and they fall on the ground. You had to go run and stomp them out really fast. Mm-hmm. So that was a job we all had. And so Jack didn't mind doing that. Up to a point. But if they got too close, like he would never go close to the orchard to stomp out the ashes. Okay. All right. So I just, again, this is me just doing supposition at this point. But one of the stories that we have of Georgie says that he was like lost in a whole bunch of trees. His parents uh, find him, bring him back in. The orchard. Yeah. So I'm wondering, because that orchard, it was ma- it was massive. Like you could get lost. And there were the trees were all very close, you know. So I'm wondering if that's the place he got lost. And obviously he didn't die there. He died in the house. But I'm wondering. Supposition. Yeah. Okay. But Jack was afraid to go in there. And we liked going picking food. Like, so you'd think he'd be like, let's go do it. No. Yeah. Never the orchard. Anyway, I just ignored the whole Georgia thing. I think Jack's just making it up. But then my mom starts dating my future stepdad, Tom. All right. And so Tom, I just want to say, was an awesome dad. You knew him. You loved him. Such a great guy. Yeah, he was wonderful. Um, And he just loved having more kids to raise. He was, he always wanted to be a dad. So he was excited to have, like, it's rare. And maybe in today's day, it's normal. But, like, I think of it as rare for a guy to be like, yeah, I'll totally take on your kids. This is a great commitment, you know? Mm Because they were freshly dating. They weren't even, like, together. And Tom was like, yeah, bring them on. We'll we'll all go come in together. Let's be a family. So that's just an awesome guy. Um, However... He was also thrown off by Georgie one night. My mom has told this story many times. So Tom was sitting at the table in the farmhouse kitchen, and he worked night shift too. And so he's up basically eating his breakfast, you know, in the middle of the night, (laughs) (laughs) ready to go to work. Um, And where he was sitting, like, he had his, he was near the back of the farmhouse kitchen. So back where the powder would be, back where the library would be, and back at the the bottom, if you will, the, the back part, the underside of the staircase. Yeah. So this staircase went up the middle of the house, but it didn't like fill in all the gaps. You know, like, yeah. I'm not sure that makes sense, but like underneath the steps. You could see through a doorway or yeah. something to the front. There, there, well, there's a little hallway behind uh, behind the back of the stairs. Mm-hmm. So you could connect the farmhouse kitchen and the living space back there and the library and the powder room doors were both back there too. Yep. And just like normal houses, you have the staircase going up and then underneath the staircase, the door that goes down to the basement, right? So okay. that's all in that back hallway. And so Tom's back is to that hallway and to that like back area. So he's talking to mom, eating his breakfast slash dinner, and he kind of keeps looking back over his shoulder. And my mom like notices it. And so she says like, what are you doing? Because she sees him looking <laughs> over his shoulder and he's like smiling and kind of giggling and whatever. And so she says, what the heck are you doing? And he says, well, I think one of the kids must be up because they're playing peekaboo with me. And again, he gets up like late because he has to go to work. Mm-hmm. And his mom yells, whoever is out there, you better get back in bed because we should yeah. not have been awake. But however, as she turns from like making his coffee, whatever, and comes out the table, um, she catches a glimpse of a face peering over the, from the side of the, the door, if you will, from that hallway. And it's none of us. Yeah. So she's all about ghosts, as you know, and she's very open to, like, seeing things. So she recognizes that this must be Georgie. I'm not sure, because, again, I don't have her here to talk. I'm not sure if she had seen Georgie prior to this, knew that Jack was playing with a a friendly ghost, and she was cool with it. But she recognized it was Georgie. Uh, But so so even Tom had a... I like that. (laughs) (laughs) I know. She allowed this to happen, yeah. So even Tom felt the presence of this ghost. So, like, that that, that validation, you know, Mm -hmm. he knew that he was playing peekaboo with a kid. Whether he saw the face or not, he knew that someone was darting back in the hallway, you know, and then, like, and he was a pretty, like, 
straightforward, you know, kind of guy. Yeah, I only believe what I see kind of yep. person. <laughs> um, now, after, you know, so I just, I kind of find like that to be like, kind of messed up, but validating. Okay. Another story that sticks in my mind that I think about um, is... And again, I don't know, like in context when it actually happened, yeah. but you know, I was born in New Hampshire because my mom was stationed up there with my dad when he was, um, on, you know, in the air force and Jack and I were actually born in New Hampshire, um, at the Pease air force base, which no longer exists. So she met a best friend up there and I just called her, I'm not going to use her, her name or her kid's name. She's just auntie. So okay. they, they're not physically related, but you know how you get that best friend who becomes auntie. We've had Ashley on before mm-hmm. for Games of Wards. So auntie Ashley, right? So she comes and the yep. kids love her. So that's this person. She's one of my mom's best friends. They just call her aunt. We call her auntie and she has kids. And I remember like, we had done like trips up to New Hampshire to visit up there again because we missed it. And she kept us for like two weeks. You know, we went out to the beach. We went, um, you know, fishing, that kind of stuff. So we were really close to auntie and her family. So she decided to come down to our house and visit for a while here, you know. And she brought two of her kids, the younger ones, because she had a whole bunch of kids. Mm-hmm. So she stayed downstairs in the living room area. And we had lots of couches in there because it's mm-hmm. a big humongous living space um and so they were their fold-out couches so that is the background she's down there with her husband or boyfriend i can't remember but yeah. moving on significant, um, significant other, other yeah other. and two of her children she wakes up in the middle of the night and she hears the sounds of trains and train whistles and kids giggling and she sees a blue light it's it's bright enough that it, like wakes her Mm Because if you're a mom, you're kind of used to noises, (laughs) but the light bothers her. So she hears her kids talking and giggling, and they're down on the floor at the foot of the bed. And that's where she can see the kind of blue light is kind of like glowing from. Mm -hmm. And so she says, guys, knock it off and get to bed. Stop playing with toys. And the train noises stop, and the blue light just disappears. And so the kids yell at her, mom, you scared Georgie away. Mm. My mom my grandmother and the three of us children had not told them about Georgie at all. Yeah. So again, very validating in my opinion, because when auntie told that story to my mom, um, my mom's like, Oh, well there is a friendly ghost in this house and his name's Georgie. Auntie wasn't very happy. Yeah. (laughs) So it was pretty messed up. Um, now at that point, Tom and my mom had been dating for quite a while. And so they decided let's, uh, get our own place. Cause she wanted to move away from the family, move away from my gram. <laughs> she wanted to have her own place, you know? Mm-hmm. So we got a new house and it's like out in the boonies. I mean, like out in the boonies, you've been there. It is boonie yeah. town. <laughs> so, um, then we move out there it's towards Danville While we're moving in, we're carrying stuff into the house. My mom is outside by the one tree telling us to put it in the garage or to put it in the house to the movers, that kind of stuff. So she's kind of like, you know, doing the pointing back and forth, what goes where. And as I come out of my kitchen onto the back porch, I look at her and I realize that she's not looking at the movers. And she's like, she has her ear kind of tilted up and she's looking off in the distance. And so I walk over to her and I say, mom, what are you, what's, what are you doing? What are you Mm -hmm. listening to? And she goes, shh, listen, do you hear that? And so I pause and I listen and I did hear it. Like literally it was the sound of toy trains. It was not the sound of like a choo-choo yeah, train that, coming. That whistle of a yeah. toy train. It was that chugga-chugga whistle kitty sound of, of trains. And I looked at her and I asked, Are there any train stations close by? Because again, new place to live. Mm-hmm. But we live in the freaking country. Like this is deep backwoods boonie empire (laughs) (laughs) so there shouldn't be any trains and she goes no that's just georgie saying goodbye to us oh and then like the the train noises she said goodbye georgie and the train noises stopped and she went back to doing her thing and i'm like the heck (laughs) just (laughs) So for a while, I did not go outside very far because that freaked me out. Yeah. But then mid 90s family life, you know, we we had a new area to explore. So we were up and down those hills, uh, those woods all over the place. Again, parenting. I don't <laughs> <laughs> And I think about how old we were and I'm like, I wouldn't let Soap and Eli do that because there are animals in woods. <laughs> but there we are, all of us gallivanting with our two neighbor friends. Lord knows how young we were. Just yep. off we go for the entire day. Sunburn, yep. we get filmed. Yeah. Oh, man. 
So those are all the Georgie stories I could think of. What are your thoughts? I mean, it sounds legit to me. It doesn't sound like a child's overactive imagination because there are... A, I have heard the stories from mm-hmm. your older brother, Jamie. B, you have your auntie's And Jamie's a straight shooter, too. Jamie yeah, doesn't yeah, like talking Jamie about Yeah, Jamie definitely ghosts. is. So, uh, you know, even hearing these stories fresh again after a couple years and everything, it's like pretty crazy, pretty incredible. Yeah, I'm thinking myself as a mom, like, why would she let my brother play with a ghost? Like, oh, he's just lonely. <laughs> okay, it's fine. He's getting social skills. <laughs> is that what that is? I mean, he's talking to something, so. <laughs> he's practicing social cues. Great. That's what we're going to call it when you hang out with a ghost in your house. All right, whatever. All right, so, I mean, I and again, I wanted to see, like, that house and see, like, if it looks the same. It looks like, because there was a company that had bought the farm because it, had, you know, had been unused for years. And we were renting it from this um, company. Because I remember they would let us go up there and, like, collect um, corn that had come out of the silos. Because they were using part of it as a working farm. Mm-hmm. And we could collect corn off the ground because it didn't get into the silos. And we could take it down to feed the ducks um, along the Susquehanna River. So that was kind of cool. That's neat. So I remember, like, walking. I mean, that road, that driveway was so stinking long. It was, like, a mile-long driveway. But it looks like they have broken up the grounds and, like, given off parcels for different houses. Okay. So, and there's yeah. lots more trees. So my childhood is gone. Of course, that was 30 years ago. <laughs> so yeah. a lot can change in that time period. Even my bus stop isn't there anymore. I'm like, oh, I remember my bus stop. <laughs> that was the first place I touched my tongue to a metal sign because Jamie told me to, and I regretted it instantly. <laughs> it's gone. Jamie. <laughs> oh, children. But anyway, let's go back to Bloomsburg University, shall we? Let's do it. All right. So we both went there for our undergrads. Mm-hmm. And ironically, we went there to be teachers. Mm-hmm. So we did the Bloomsburg Normal School justice. Well, it's still one of the best in the state. Mm-hmm. Cool. East Coast, actually. Okay. Yep. People come from other states to go to Bloomsburg. Well, yeah. 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 So I got to give a shout out there. Bloomsburg does know what it's doing when yeah, it comes to education. We get a lot of New Jersey and New Yorkers. And business. They have a good business program. Yeah. All right, so anyway, both go there for undergrads. We also went to the Andrews Library there a whole bunch of times. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because it had some good food connected to it. I mean, library is important. You, I miss Java City. Isn't it Starbucks there now? Starbucks is there now. <sighs> Java City was better. Anyway, we also went there for the dreaded microfiches. Did you ever use one of those? Yeah, I thought it was great. Oh, God. You get to spin the little knob and... It's the worst. <laughs> I remember I had to go do it for like one of my English courses, and I was like, "Why, why, why do I? Why can't I just open like a, an encyclopedia? Why do I have to do this?" I never had to. I don't remember why I used it. No, a university professor like it was one of our classes for English, and we had to as part of like a research thing. Like it was like a scavenger hunt. We had to find certain information on the super microfiche. Hmm. It was the worst. But all right, not only is Andrews Library known for the dreaded microfiches and schoolwork and Java City. It's also haunted. Did you know that? I kind of figured because you brought it up on this podcast. That's true. Yeah. All right. So I, I wanted to. I use to, my brain. Oh, big brain. <laughs> big space. Um, I wanted to finish out with like a, a shout out back to the universe. My grandmother never went to because <laughs> she didn't want to. Um, and, you know, kind of connect all of us because we were there. Did you ever go to the fourth floor of Andrew's library? Oh, I've been on all of them. All yeah. of them? Oh, well, it's amazing. That I've been around that library. You've been around the library. Okay, you add that extra part. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm taking this from BUNow.com. It's actually BU's website. Yep. Uh, so it's actually called The Andrews Library, Haunted or Just Full of Really Big Books by Andrew Walker. I okay. love the title. All right, so um, I'm taking some stuff from there. Some of it's verbatim, some of it's not. So as we know, a library is scary because it has books. Badoom chain. All right. So <laughs> the Andrews Library at BU has four stories of books. Ooh. English teachers are excited everywhere. <laughs> However, the legend of the Andrews apparition is even scarier. Some say it's the tortured spirit of a past BU student. Imagine being stuck in a library. <laughs> what a terrible afterlife. I mean, if you like reading, it's not so bad, right? 
says the tortured spirit of a past BU student. So this one does not. <laughs> All these books are terrible. <laughs> this is the worst section of heck I could be in. Anyway. It's the children's book section. <laughs> no. Some say it's the restless ghost of a scorned librarian. Still others maintain that it's just a crazy old man who has lost his way. Oh. Whichever story you choose to believe in, this thing is very real and very creepy. And it's been validated by many people. So the legend of the Andrews apparition begins with the building of the new library. Now, I worked in the Student Services Center. Mm -hmm. That used to be where the library was. Okay. Fun fact. Uh, but they moved that to its present location, which now still exists, in 1998. So when we were still youngins, yep. the, the library was built, the four-story one. And that's when the Andrews apparition made its debut. Okay. This ghost is known not just for being cheeky, but also for acts of vandalism and destruction. All right. In a library. Shh. As librarians say. It does it quietly. It does it. I'm doing it quietly. Quiet Look at me throw this book quietly. I could use this spray paint, but I'll use a brush. <laughs> Where did you get the paint? And it's red again. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some of these misdeeds include putting books in wrong locations. That would drive librarians nuts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, knocking over trash cans. I don't like that. That's disgusting. That's noisy. Yes. <laughs> and things being scattered all over the place. Okay. So you could chalk this up to kids being kids. Yeah. This all sounds like college student stuff at the moment. But many times when the librarians and helpers come in in the morning, they find the mishaps have been done and they close up at eight o'clock in the evening and everything is where it's supposed to be. Mm. Yes. So imagine you put all your papers away. You're behind the reception desk. You have it all looking pretty. Come the next day. I'd be so angry. I'd be, yeah. Not happy. No. At all. All right. However, the most disturbing story, and I mean disturbing, is the man on the fourth floor. Over the years, many students have come to the library desk with the exact same story. When up on the fourth floor, they are constantly harassed by an old man who will not leave them alone. The most common thing he asks of them? Take a guess. Spare change. No. And it's not get off my lawn. Food. No. To change his diaper. Oh. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The first time a student came to the reception complaining about it, uh, the receptionists were not believing, of course, because what old dude's like, can you change my diaper? <laughs> However, they went upstairs to check it out. No one was there. And this, like, this student was, like, really, really upset. Mm -hmm. A few years later, a student came down to the desk with the exact same story. Like, word for word. And so the workers were a bit freaked out because they had not promoted the story. Yeah. Um, and these students would not have been connected because, you know, you graduate every four years kind of thing. Yeah. So they went upstairs, checked it out. No one's there. So it adds validity because it's the exact same story, mm -hmm. years apart. And then... Over the years, these stories just continued to people being together and the old dude walking up and asking for it, like, to a group of kids. And they're like, seriously, there is a guy up there and he's really creepy and he won't leave us alone. Wow. Yeah. So um, they have tried to catch this guy. But they someone just changed the man's diaper? <laughs> I mean, bring some baby wipes. We've all had to do it. No, I'm kidding. Um, so that is at the Andrews. There's also a ghost. In the Haas Center. I've heard of that one. Yes. I was there a lot because I was in all the bands um, and I was in a choir. But that one is interesting because it was said that there was um, a seance done and they brought back a ballet singer. And now he cries during certain performances and you'll hear him sobbing. That's just mean. Let the man go back where he was from. Darn seancers. He's just moved by the performances. So beautiful. <laughs> I know when I was there and I was playing, it was beautiful. You're welcome, world. <sighs> I'd say that's who was crying when we wa when we saw Evita there, but that was probably just me. It's just <sighs> horrible. It was wonderful. It was well made, but it's just a horrible show. No, it's not. <laughs> it's Weber. Say it's what, fantastic. Say what you what you say and you, know, you believe there, but <laughs> I, uh, I I beg I to I'm, differ. I think I'm correct. All right, so that is my story for this evening. It's really cool. Go. 
Yeah. So you learned all the Georgie stories and now they are recorded forever. So yeah. we have them. Um, and I'm not making that up. People just, you know, my listeners like that is that's my childhood. Never saw them. So like, again, when I said I didn't really believe in ghosts, I was creeped out, but I didn't want to believe in ghosts growing yeah. up. You know, I was kind of the right thing. Like I was kind of ambivalent. Didn't really see much. Right. Um, and the the library story, she's kind of cool. Yeah. We were there a lot and we never once were annoyed. I was annoyed by college kids who didn't know how to use a stinking encyclopedia. But apart mm-hmm. from that, and being microfiches, still my nightmares. Yeah. Ooh. I spent a lot of time there for one of my elementary education classes. Yeah, there was a hot chick who had a crush on you. I had to come to your meetings because she was, like, all over you. <laughs> I, re- I remember that distinctly. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. One of the only dudes in the elementary education tract. You were hot. Surrounded by women. You were, and they all wanted a little taste. Well, they didn't get it, now did they? <clears throat> I'm nope. watching you people out there. I'm watching you. Whoever you were, and be you, back off. But fun fact, okay. the Andrus Library does have a children's section. Lots of kids' books. Dr. Seuss, Eric Carle, all those. And guess what? As a secondary ed major, never went to it. <laughs> Couldn't even tell you where it was. I, I want to say it's actually <laughs> on the fourth floor. It's one of the upper floors, but... Well, I, I stayed on the first two Maybe floors. Maybe that's why the guy was asking for his diaper to be changed. He, you know, he... <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> it's uh, just a kid. We're just going to end now. <laughs> a very big kid who was an old man. All yep. right. We're going we're to stop aged now. He as aged as a ghost. <laughs> he aged like a fine wine. Oh, <laughs> we can't do that. All right. Well, thank you, listeners, for this installment of my own personal story. We are getting close to 10,000 downloads, so the Wellhouse Exorcism is going to do yet another giveaway in the upcoming weeks. Mm. Yes, but I'm going to hold off until we get close to that 10K mark, and then I will actually start plugging it. All right? So get on Facebook and like our page. Remember that we are a subsidiary of Games Overboard. If you don't have Facebook, email us. Email us at gamesoboard at gmail.com. Jackie does it all the time. Yes. We love it. All right. You want to find us on Twitter? Obviously, we're getting some people on there, too. Yeah. So you can follow us on Twitter. There are lots of ways to find us. But most times, just go to gamesoverboard.com, and you'll find us on our official website. Yes. And you want to add, honey bunny? Just message us. Like, you, you'll you hear back from us pretty quick. Yep. And like I said before, uh, we met one person uh, one Via of our Zoom. fans in person mm-hmm. and the other one in Zoom and had like an hour and a half conversation with them. And we've talked to Tim and we're bringing Tim on this show. Yeah. We got to schedule the actual time, but it's going to happen. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Maybe we'll bring him on for the bunkers because I have, thanks to another listener, Penny, I have all of this information <laughs> on the Elvira bunkers now too. So I have a lot of research. Yes. So thank you, Penny. See, it pays to be a great listener and interact. We, li- listeners, I know you're listening still. Um, we live with three children. Please talk to us. We need to talk to adults. We need adult talk conversation. Talking with me doesn't cut it. No, talking to yourself. Shannon starts asking if I'm talking to Georgie. No, I say you talking to me. <laughs> yeah, it's not good for you. <laughs> I need actual people. <laughs> no, I love him. And he, <laughs> as I yell, I love him. Anyway. I love this man <laughs> so much. <sighs> Please reach out. We look forward to hearing from you. And as always, think creepy thoughts. <laughs> <laughs>